NAPIQ is the organisation that represents the space for psychiatric intensive care and low security units. It's about sharing those ideas and not feeling, feeling isolated. Well, I would say NAPIQ is here to help people who would struggle otherwise to represent or help themselves. It's for the furthering of psychiatric intensive care. NAPIQ is a multidisciplinary organisation. I think it's about a, like the community of people that are working towards the same thing, really. The way in which it really started was uh, myself and a couple of colleagues. This was uh, Do Dr. Dominic Beer, who was a great colleague of mine, and Carol Payton, who was a pharmacist dealing with mental health issues. Down at Bexley Hospital in 1994 95, we became acutely aware of the fact that there was very poor provision of psychiatric intensive care in the country. There was a conference in 1996 um, organised by our London colleagues and, uh, and the late Dr Dominic Beer uh, along with Stephen Pereira and Carol Patton put together a conference and there was an invite at the end of that conference that if other people were interested in trying to advance the uh, position for psychiatric intensive care predominantly for some very disadvantaged patients then we could um, stay behind and, and do that. There was a coming together of like-minded people who had good values, who were concerned to, uh, to develop um, services, uh, improvements in patient care, but there's also a passion for personal and professional development of those involved. Well, the main mission, and it always has been, and it hasn't altered at all since uh, 1996 and is fit for purpose and true for 2017, is to advance psychiatric intensive care and low secure care, discuss and improve the mechanisms for the delivery of psychiatric intensive and low secure care, to audit the effectiveness of the services that are provided within these settings, organize educational opportunities for staff, provide a real forum for opportunity uh, and opportunity, uh, opportunities for networking of individuals within these settings. Pathways is an um, intensive um, care uh, unit uh, for uh, people who suffer from severe mental health problems. There's a holistic awareness of people's needs. We aim to make our decisions about what patients need, what they want, as much as we can, and work together so that we can all do our best to get the best outcome. What I try and do is to help people to gain and strengthen control over their feelings again so that they feel safer. To try to help the whole individual and one can only do that if uh, one is patient-centred. What we hope to achieve is for the patient to understand their illness. At the very core of what we're about, we aim to be a patient-led um, organisation. What NAPICU has never lost is this notion that things ought to be better than they are, but can be better than they are, which is, I think, a distinction. So um, there are quite often people with different views of uh, di different experiences, um, and that agenda keeps advancing um, because people believe that it, that, that it can advance. There are many people with ideas um, who can't frame the future in a way that those ideas have, have, have been advanced. One of the interesting things was there was a paper published in the Psychiatric Bulletin uh, about PICUs called Special Care Wards, Are They Special? And it talked about um, some very poor standards really and a disengaged, contained group of patients not having a particularly good experience, nor with the staff. So we felt very motivated to improve things for the staff and for the patients. So this dehumanization and brutalization of these units really got our attention and because Dominic and myself ran a psychiatric intensive care unit down in Bexley which is in southeast England, we decided that we should do something about this and this prompted the three of us to run the first national survey of uh, psychiatric intensive care units in, in England. At times it can be incredibly inspirational to listen 
to patient stories, carer stories, to genuinely use that to inform policy and practice. So when we started with uh, NAPQ and the formulation of this uh, uh, association in 1996, what we thought was important was not only to survey who were the kind of individuals who required this kind of care, but also to standardize uh, for under one banner what is the definition of psychiatric intensive care, what is the definition of low secure care, and therefore then to provide standards for intensive care and low secure care so that all units throughout the UK and indeed in Europe or elsewhere could then subscribe to such a definition. And if you had a clear definition, then you could formulate good standards. If you had good standards, then you could deliver high quality care to the end user, which is people with severe mental disorder with disturbed behaviour. I think we need to do that. It's a difficult area to work in. And I think it's really important for us all to, to share what we're doing and be like a network and support to one another. When I first got involved with NAPQ and I knew what NAPQ had done for intensive care since its inception in 1996 from Stephen Pereira, the pinnacle of that, I suppose, in the first number of years was the national minimum standards that gave a new guidance and definition that had never existed before to what is our, our highest possible level of clinical care to mental health. I first got involved with NAPQ in 2002. Myself and a colleague, Stephen Dye, we had both been appointed to new posts in Buckinghamshire, leading the uh, development <coughs> of a psychiatric intensive care unit. And then uh, we found this organisation called NAPQ, uh, with a number of eminent individuals and uh, some standards that have been published and the first edition of a book, that was just fabulous for us because here we were about to embark on a really tough uh, job and there were people out there already doing it. Prior to uh, us producing standards, there was a, a wide range of practice in different places in the country, basically lacking sophistication, a containment and control agenda rather than a, a, an engagement and a therapeutic um, treatment agenda. We felt that wasn't good enough. I think it does give you a sense of community. I think NAPQ does. Because you know that there's people that you can you can go to should you require support. I've networked with lots of other OTs that I've met through NAPQ. So if you know I wanted some advice, I could go to, to others that are doing the same role on different wards. And I don't think I would have met them potentially if it wasn't for, for NAPQ. So I think it's, it's, it's really helpful actually in terms of networking. Well, the Journal of Psychiatric Intensive Care um, is a, it's been a long journey. Um, it started actually around 1997 at an annual conference and what it was was a single newsletter, one side of A4, um, on which current issues for the day were placed on the seats at the conference. The journal um, obviously arose out of a newsletter. So I think from the start, there was a, it was identified that it would be good for people working in the field to be able to communicate with each other and to learn. Many professionals have published from a range of dis uh, disciplines, including uh, service users have also published their views in the journal, which we're, we're very proud of. And the motivation behind it was uh, to think that um, as a kind of niche specialty, there wasn't a lot of good quality research that was particularly applicable to our our patient group and that we as a, as a network of um, clinicians were in a good position to make that happen. Uh, a journal is, uh, is a book of empty pages unless people are willing to um, produce work, to, to be inquisitive and to approach their, their experiences whether it be professional or non-professional in a way that's an analytical, in a way that they're prepared to write down and send to us so we can make sure that that wisdom is available to other people. Other bits of, of thinking around the time of the journal were really around um, trying to have an international and a multidisciplinary focus. And I think the journal is going from strength to strength in terms of uh, more contributions coming in and still trying to maintain this kind of breadth of um, contributorship, so the variety of disciplines that would um, submit articles. So we feel that the, the journal's um, got, a, got a good future going forward. When I was probably 20-something uh, years old, laying a single piece of paper on a seat at a conference, I would have never believed 
that 20 years from that point we would now have a scientific peer-reviewed um, international journal um, which continues to um, present a platform for people to publish their views and ideas. It's uh, 23 years down, uh, down the line. We've had about uh, 22 national conferences. NAPIQ is a really, really diverse and energetic group. The world is changing, healthcare is changing. What next, really? How, how do we carry on pushing forward? If we don't change with time, we become irrelevant. I believe there will always be a need for NAPIQ. We have a real understanding about what psychiatric intensive care is. The past 22 years has been actually, let's do something better. And honestly, I believe we can always do better. Yeah, there's been a significant improvement journey, but it's not finished. To ask whether or not there will always be a need for NABIQ, you'd nearly need to ask yourself a different question, which would be, will there always be a need to improve care? Because that's what NABIQ has done.